This is from a book I've got and it shows quite simply the various views, some of them, there's infinite number, but there's eight shown here, of a one-point perspective. Basic box could be a room, could be a view if you start to think of it in abstract terms. From the same book you can see four examples of an internal space with a few people in it and how simple it is to turn a basic uh, view into something that's recognisable. found this interesting little diagram in the same book which shows quite clearly a one-point perspective. I'm sure you can see what it is. It's not politically correct being an ashtray but it gets the message across. This is an example of one-point perspective in various guises from Francis Ching's book or one of his books and shows quite clearly how you can vary a one-point perspective and get fairly dramatic views and interesting views of what you may be trying to show. I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see the detail. The diagram on the bottom left is a two-point perspective. You can see it uh, diminishing to the right and diminishing to the left. Uh, the top right diagram on the black ground is uh, an axonometric of a construction of blocks where the sides of the parallels are kept parallel. They don't taper as per the perspective. Now, I believe that the understanding of perspective starts from the basics of geometry. Okay, I've drawn the square just to uh, short circuit the video. Now, what I need to find is the half points on the side. Now, if I'm clever enough, I can probably guess it, and most of us can. The other way, just for practice, is to uh, make diagonals, which automatically gives you the halfway point. Now what we're going to do is expand this square. So the halfway point of the side would be there and the halfway point of the side would be there. Now if we continue this and continue this we can expand this square and make a grid. How? By joining here to here. But if I did a line through there, if you remember your geometry, that side or that length should equal that. Conversely, if I draw a side through there, that should equal that. Close enough to it. Remember, we're drawing freehand. Now, if I continue this line parallel with this, and I can complete this one, and then draw a line parallel here, a check might be if you did a line through the corners, they should intersect. Now, you can continue this diagram in any direction you like by just extending the diagonals. So how do we use this? We're talking one point perspective. So if we had a line which is one side of these two squares now you can also choose an eye line or horizon line now I'm going to choose not dead centre, because that's a bit boring, to me anyway. What I'm going to do is choose my vanishing point. The left-hand side of the square would disappear to the vanishing point. The same would be to this one. And the third side would be over here. Now there is a way of calculating the distance 
of the diagonal but if you like you can just simply guess what the square might look like in perspective and I'm going to say it's there so my diagonal I'm going to put here and that'll be diagonal point diagonal this would be where it intersects here is the first grid and where it intersects there is the second grid now if I wanted to go three or more grids back I can extend this line get this same distance here where it intersects there is my fourth grid back so I could complete a three by three grid just like that and that is in one point perspective now remember this is a grid it can be imaginary it's a measuring tool it can be both horizontal can be vertical either side or it could be let's say a ceiling plan couldn't it or an overhead grid this vanishing point is also my center of vision that's where I'm looking CV I'm looking at that vanishing point just there now how might we apply this well we'll draw a simple box we'll look inside a grid which could very easily in your imagination be a room or it could be an outdoor space like courtyard or whatever could also be a solid building same module would disappear to the vanishing point this is on the internal side of the box of course and this one would go up now you don't have to draw all these lines if you don't need them okay I can complete this side parallel 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 that's the back of the box there I'll shade it in now I could join this corner if you wanted to you could draw these grids in they may be useful in terms of setting out something so you can see that this is a freehand view of a box or a room whatever it is a room and you have a window here simplified it would fit there let's say would have a headpiece which would disappear to the vanishing point would have a sill that disappears to the vanishing point and this might be a midpoint for a window now in the center of the room how do you get the center remember you join the corners in the center there might be a light fitting I guess we might have a table in here somewhere we'll draw the four legs might fit here here and that's the end elevation looks like that table would disappear back there assuming it's parallel to the sides of the room and would fit that leg would finish there so there's your table not the greatest uh, design but you get the point